In this video, we will be discussing inverse variation. So we can think of inverse variation as being like the exact opposite of a direct variation. So whereas in a direct variation, two variables were directly proportional, in an inverse variation, the two variables are inversely proportional. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at these two equations, okay? These two are the equations that we can use for inverse variation. If we think back to direct, direct variation was shown by y equals k times x. Well, inverse is just the opposite. Instead of being y t equals k times x, we get y equals k divided by x. And in a direct variation, we knew y divided by x gave us our constant. Well, in an inverse variation, x times y equals our constant. So we could just think of an inverse being the exact opposite. In direct variation, we are multiplying k and x. In inverse variation, we are dividing k by x. And k is still known as the constant of variation. So you're going to need to know these two equations right here. So now what do they look like? Well, if we thought that a direct variation was a straight line that passed through the y x or the origin the y or the inverse variation is a curved line that doesn't touch either axis i mean it never crosses the x axis it never crosses the y axis so it's this really weird kind of crazy curvy line can't pass through 0 0 it's curvy and it's actually in two different quadrants it's either in 1 and 3 or it's in 2 and 4. So in this case, we have y equals k divided by x. So if we think about it, or y equals 3 divided by x. So if we think about it, at the point 1, 3, well, y equals 3 divided by 1. 3 divided by 1 is 3, so y equals 3 here. And then similarly over here, I've got negative 3, negative 1. 3 divided by negative 3 gives me negative 1, so that's my point right here. So there are these crazy curved lines. These are what direct variations look like. So now, how can we tell if a relation is direct? Well, there are two things. We're not going to worry about a graph. They should look like this weird, crazy thing, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. But from a set of values, I want to multiply y by x. And if the value is constant, then the relation is direct. This shouldn't say direct. This should say inverse. Because we know y equals k divided by x, so x times y equals k. So if I multiply my x and my y, I'm going to get a constant number, then my uh, relation is going to be inverse, right? Similar if to figure out, uh, this shouldn't say direct, that should say inverse. Similar to when we were doing direct variations, we did y divided by x and saw if that was constant. Now we're going to do x times y. And if we've got a word problem, we're just going to make a table of values and then check. So let's look at our first example. It says, which of the tables below represents inverse variations? Let's just say inverse variation, but whatever. So to determine if they're inverse, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply x by y in every single one of these. So I'm going to say 2 times 4, well that's 4, or 2 times 24, that's 48. Remember we want to think y equals a constant divided by x. So x times y equals a constant. So I want all three of these multiplications to give me 48 if the first one does. So now I'm going to try 4 times 12. That also gives me 48. 8 times 6, that also gives me 48. So this one, this one is inverse. Now let's check over here. Well, in this one, 4 times 6 gives me 24. 10 times 15, however, that gives me 150. And 14 times 21, that gives me 294. So this is not inverse. However, if we go the opposite way, 6 divided by 4, that's 1.5. 
15 divided by 10, that's 1.5. And 21 divided by 14, well, that's also 1.5. So y divided by x is, con is constant. So this one is actually a direct variation. So when I multiplied x and y, I got a constant that made it inverse. When I divided y by x, that gave me a constant that makes it direct. Right, let's try another example. Example two says, the, does the table below represent an inverse variation? If so, write the equation. So remember to figure that out. I'm gonna multiply x by y for inverse. So two times 36, that gives me 72. Four times 18 also gives me 72. And nine times eight gives me 72. So yes, this is inverse. We know y equals k divided by x. I'm gonna say this is inverse. We know y is k divided by x, and we figured out that k is 72, so y equals 72 divided by x. That is the equation for this situation right here. Now I could use that if I said, okay, well, what if x is 72? Well, then I'd say y equals 72 divided by 72, which is 1. All right, I can use these now to figure out all of my different values. If I, for example, said, what if x was 6? Well, then y equals 72 divided by 6. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. 72 divided by 6. Oh, it's 12. So y would equal 12. 6 times 12 gives me 72. All right, so we can use the equation once we have it to find missing values. All right. Example three says a group of friends is splitting the cost of renting a car for a trip. If two people split the cost, each person pays $180. If four people split the cost, each person pays 90. If each person, pay, each person pays $72, if five people split the cost, is this situation an inverse variation and how much would each person spend if eight people split the cost? So let's go through this. First, I need to define my X and my Y. So I know I have people, splitting a cost. So I'm gonna say X is people and Y is the amount each person pays. So I'm gonna make myself a table. One of these has a table, there you go. My X, Y table. So I know there are two people and each person pays 180, four people and each person pays $90, five people and each person pays 72. And I'm trying to figure out if there are eight people, then how much do they each pay? So I need to work this out. I wanna see if it's inverse. So I'm gonna multiply two times 180, four times 90, five times 72. If I work that out, two times 180 equals 360, four times 90 equals 360, five times 72 equals 360. So this is in fact an inverse variation. So I know I've got y equals k divided by x. I know my k is 360, so my equation is y equals 360 divided by x. Now I'm trying to figure out what y is when x is eight. So I'm gonna plug eight into my equation. y equals 360 divided by eight. I work that out, I get 45. So my answer is $45. So all we had to do, put this word problem into a table and then work it out. Example four says, if b varies inversely as a, and b equals 12 when a equals eight, what is b when a equals six? Now in this one, we gotta make our table. And it's kind of weird because we normally are used to working with x and y, but now I have b and a. And I just wanna show you that the template always looks like this. It's y varies directly as x. Now, whatever goes here, whatever comes first, that's gonna be the y value. Whatever goes here, this is gonna be the x value. So in this case, instead of y, I'm gonna use b. Instead of x, I'm gonna use a. So b varies directly as x, so my table, my x, y table, is gonna look like this, a, b. It says b is 12 when a is eight. And it says, what is b when a is six? So I'm trying to figure out 
When A is 6, what is B? It tells us that they are inversely related. So I know that I need to do, I know y equals k over x. And to figure out k, I know I need to do x times y. That'll give me k. So I do my x and y that I know are my a and b. 8 times 12 is 96. So I know I have the equation. Let's get rid of this. I know that I'm going to have the equation b equals 96 over a. Well, I want to figure out what b is when a is 6. So I just go ahead and say, okay. Whoa, I don't know what just happened there. Plug in 96 or plug in 6 for a, so b equals 96 over 6, which gives me b equals 16. So all I did is I knew the fact that they were varied inversely. So I multiplied my a times my b to get my k, plug that into my equation, plug my known number into the equation, and worked it out to get my missing number. So your try it problem for tonight says, decide if the table below represents an inverse variation, then find the missing value.